to get on started with the new moon in Aquarius ceremony that I host each month i do depends on the month but we always have two ceremonies usually we have a new moon one so it is saturday morning right now it's 12 p.m saturday i host these live and a lot of people come live from all over the world a lot of people watch the recording obviously because some of people have plans on saturdays some people are busy different time zones so it's really always amazing because it's so cool to gather with everyone who's here live on this beautiful new really just like innovative expansive energy um and then of course everyone gets to catch the recording we're about to have a really powerful hour and a half ceremony and ritual if you've never come to these this is something you definitely want to join in the future if you're actually watching this on like tuesday or even wednesday um, if you join divinity you can still get access to this exact ceremony that i'm about to host that's really exciting i'll have a link for divinity down below um, but if you join before the ceremony you can always join through a one-time ticket which is really exciting i'm wearing one of the new lift your frequency pieces that's going to launch soon by the time you're seeing this it might have already launched it's kunzite with a clear quartz and then pearl on the back by the clasp so stunning having a little bit of coffee and we're about to get started it's such a powerful ceremony and we're about to do it mia's laying next to me to light up allowing that shade of orange to be whatever feels right to you as you focus at your sacral perhaps a little bit smaller if that feels right to you energetic orb chakra your root chakra bringing your energy and breathing into that space and expand and open and expand as you just really feel your whole energetic body activate you might even begin to sense your aura around you expand a little bit and that should feel nice these visions these intentions of the energy making room to receive. Yes, so happy Saturday. As you saw, I just had and ran the new moon in Aquarius ceremony a ritual. It was really beautiful. We discussed what this energy is, what the themes are, channeled messages. We did a really powerful 30 minute meditation, sound bowl healing, and gentle hypnosis. That's what I do inside the ceremony and rituals. It's really cool. So it's like a very beautiful deep med guided meditation with sound bowls and with a gentle hypnosis. I really love it. <laughs> and then we did our ritual. So every time I got you through a new ritual to do, and we did pick a card. And now, guess what? The Magic Manifestation Candle New Moon Aquarius drop dropped today, and we're already selling out, so it's really, really exciting. So I already put the number of candles that'll be available on there based on all my supplies. And I'm about to make all the candles. Like I said, I make them under each energetic alignment. So today is the New Moon in Aquarius, so that means the candles will be made. It's a Saturday, and Mom is gonna get to work. <laughs> so we're about to get everything ready. First, I prep all the jars and the wicks and everything like that. Then I go ahead and I get into the zone. I put on a playlist. I have all the wax. I add everything in. Today's candles, when you're watching this, are already available. If you're watching this and there's any candles left, definitely buy one because if you come back, they'll probably be sold out. They sold out really quickly last time. I'm going to be adding organic mugwort to today's blend. Mugwort is a very magical um, herb and it's such a beautiful herb for new beginnings. Like Today's energy of this new moon Aquarius is very much freedom, innovation, new beginnings, and I'm so excited to activate them with that. So when you receive them, you have this very powerful charge of this mental clarity, this breath of fresh air energy. I charge them over the pot, my wax melting pot. Mia's, uh, Mia woke up so she's rowdy. She was napping. It was so cute during the ceremony. I was playing the sound bowls and she's, or like my handheld, really beautiful, like AB one. And she was laying and she was snoring. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's loving the sound bath. I was like, I should play the sound bowl for her every night before bed. Her and Coco, they would both gather. <laughs> but um, I'm going to be charging them, like I said, activating all of them energetically pouring them, everything like that. So we're gonna go get started and get to work. Thank you. 
I just finished making the candles. They are so beautiful, so stunning. They're, like I said, hand poured, crafted with love under this new moon in Aquarius. I think I got some super glue on me from earlier, which is kind of annoying. I realized I need to not wear nice clothes when I make candles because even though I'm just like in loungewear, I think I got like, I don't know if this is water or wax on me. I think I might have literally gotten wax on this one of this kind. I got a drip of wax on my new Uggs. And at first I was gonna be triggered and be like, I just got these yesterday. But then I was like, I'm gonna reframe and say that this little tiny drop of wax is just a symbol that I am a candle maker. And I'm also gonna take the lesson from it to not be naive and wear clothes I don't mind getting dirty next time I make candles. Um, I made two less than I thought I was going to. I, th I thought I had like I thought that wax was gonna make me two more, so I have to go take off two off the website, and they're already selling out really quick. So like I said earlier, if they're still available, grab yours because probably when you come back in a day they might not be there. Um, yeah, like I said, I make I increase the batch each time. They're never super ginormous, right? Like I'm one person, I'm not making like a thousand candles. Um, but so, but I will continue to increase the batches, but they're always obviously going to be limited because I want to be able to sure I can pour them and charge them. Right now they're setting, right? They're cooling. I'm rotate putting them on the amethyst as well to really, really amplify them. And yeah, I'm really hungry. I'm gonna have a snack bar. And then I'm gonna go curl my hair. And my husband and I have a little date night tonight for this new moon. We're going to a restaurant we're wanting to go to. And we can bring Mia and we're gonna sit inside because now she's a certified psychiatric support dog. So she can go inside, which is so exciting. So I'll bring you guys along. This is your local candle making magic queen, not local, I guess global. It is your global. There's this guy on Instagram called Brian Jordan Alvarez. He's pretty famous, but he has this like one character, Marnie. I talked about this before, and in one of the videos, she was like, yeah, my friend showed me around the neighborhood on his jet, and by the neighborhood, I mean the globe, <laughs> or something like that. Um, so I finished making the candles. I got ready, as you can tell. I'm so hungry. I look a headache. I'm so hungry. We're going to get some of that ceviche from Bristol Farm. No, because we're going to eat in like an hour. Oh, yeah. I want to be hungry. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and we are headed off for a date night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, okay, I know advice, uh, well, advice. I wanted my husband to give some advice on here because you guys really liked him on the podcast when he gave a bunch of dating advice. So I want you to give advice to people who are like single and like freshly dating, people who are more avidly dating, and then people who are in re relationships slash married. So we have a whole sector of stuff. So people who are fresh to the market, they just downloaded Hinge, they uploaded their picture, they got their, I don't know how it works. You know that there's like a lot more information you put in now? My friend, you know, was showing me like all the info. And there's like a lot you put in nowadays, like way more than when we met. The money's in the data. Okay, so the advice for the people who are, you're like one of those people when you interview who are hard to interview. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, all right, and anyway. Okay, so my question is, what is genuine advice for people who are freshly, newly dating? Maybe back out there after a long time, maybe after a breakup, maybe just never decided to download the apps, or even you're just dating in person, um, and you decide to put yourself out there, what would you say? Um, I think due to the weather being cold, I think if Not someone's, everywhere, ask, Miami. someone's asking you out on a date, mm -hmm. like, you want to do more than go for a drink or something at this time like if you're living in Los Angeles at the moment it's in the low 40s you want someone to be creative and think of something interesting to do for a day other than just a drink because well, that will so, show their intent also I think that's like a general theme like don't accept coffee dates and stuff I mean obviously it's your prerogative coffee over alcohol though no but I'm just saying people need, okay hold on I need to zoom back out I really zoomed in and now Okay, people, however much effort they put into something, that's how much they value it. So if someone puts no effort into planning a day, it's not, a, think about how like when you plan a vacation and you are like, know what restaurants you're going to and you know like everything you're doing, you're so excited because you put so much effort into it. Do you know what I'm saying? Or like any day that you've put energy and effort into planning, it's like very special. If you're just like invite someone to meet them at your local bar or whatever it is, or even restaurant, like there's just not that much effort. I also, other factors can show effort like for example if someone's like vegan or something right and that person goes out of their way to like find a vegan restaurant that they like and they ask you what cuisine you like um we met for a drink on our first day no we didn't we met for dinner 
Actually, we did. I think, I think we ate though. No? I, I've just been to Abra. I, I, I think I ate. Maybe. Yeah, our, our first day was at the Montage. It's not the Mayborn, Beverly Hills, very special place in our heart. Um, but I think like just watch for creativity and and I think it's like expect more. Expect effort. more. Yeah, expect more effort and also like don't be afraid to say like no. Like just because someone invites you somewhere doesn't mean and like that you just agree to it. I don't know. I feel like a lot of women, if some guy invites them on a date somewhere, they're just like oh my god, I'm invite a date and they're just are excited but it's like do you really even want to go there you know so it's like what's your favorite type of cuisine you're like um four dollar signs on yelp <laughs> that that kind of cuisine no i'm kidding you said like five michelin star restaurants you're like i've uh, been considering the, you know the ones that, so it's so funny so we were looking at we were going to go to san francisco for his birthday and we we're you're really into cooking and his mom's a chef so he loves food and so for us we really like to go eat at nice places and experience like food and different stuff and all of that good, good stuff. Very great, very lackluster grammar there. But essentially, you know, most Michelin star restaurants, a lot of them have like a set menu, and a, a lot of them, most of the ones have multiple Michelin star. It's like three hundred dollars a person, and then it's so funny because then if you want to add wine, it's another two hundred sixty-five dollars a person, and then it gets even better. Then it's like, oh, by the way, there's a twenty percent gratuity also added. So if you did like the meal and the wine for two people and the gratuity and the tax. Like 1500 bucks. Yeah, it's it's like so, it's like so wild. So it'd be so funny if someone's like inviting you on a date, they're like, anywhere you've been wanting to go, you're like, um, yeah, you send them like all- French laundry. Yeah. <laughs> JSX. Yeah, you're like, uh, you're like, yeah, just, these are my few things, and like act completely serious. But what I, what I meant Sorry. by that We got on is, tangent. is just, you know, like if you're on Hinge in particular, over like oh, Tinder or Bumble or whatever, um, you know, there's a lot of prompts there. There's a lot of information already there. And if someone's just like, oh, hey, you're cute. You want to go for a drink? It's a little bit kind of lazy. I feel like you'll notice the creativity or someone's effort level very early on and you can avoid cheap people. And yeah, because like, if it, like cause everyone's effort, I would say everyone's effort diminishes, but obviously in the beginning, when people are going to put the most effort, men and women, like women are going to put the most effort in looking good and getting dressed. I know in the beginning, I would get ready for like three hours for all of our dates. I would literally have like my hair blown out for like all of our dates. Literally has one come and do it. I would like get fully ready. Like it was a whole thing, babe. So whenever you saw me looking good, just know. But, and so yeah, like you'll just notice people who are more cool or initially will show more interest slash more effort. I mean, it's like sliding um, versus people who don't. Obviously, like I'm more dramatic with things because I just like to give dramatic examples. Yeah, but have high standards. Also, I feel like when you have high standards, you stand out to people because they're like, oh, whoa, she expects blank. And also will help weed out people who aren't on your vibe. We're headed, like I said, to dinner. We're going to a Southeast Asian place. We're really excited. We've been wanting to try it for a little bit. We were going to try it on New Year's Day, but we were tired bears. Yeah, we were tired because we drove a lot. Um, and on the way, we're stopping at Sephora, your favorite place. Because I need to pick up uh, a corrector. Yeah, very exciting, but it's on the way, so I'm just going to grab it. I'll show it to you. This has been a long video. I feel like we've talked a lot. Mia loves driving. It's so cute. It's kind of like it does a little bit warm. You know, she probably needs to wee wee. When we get there, we go wee wee. We go pee pee. Yeah. We say we love wee wee. Stint it in to din din din. We love wee wee. Stint it in to din din din. She's smiling. What are you saying? Big yawn. Big yawn. Yeah, pop pop. So we stopped at Sephora. I need to pick up one thing, and you guys know I'm like 95%, maybe 92 into clean beauty, but there are just certain products where I can't find a good clean version that doesn't clog my skin because a lot of clean products, they go to like oil or cream bases, right? Whether it's foundation or blush is really huge because it is hard to make like a non-toxic powder blush without, without some chemicals. Um, and same thing with like I wanted a corrector to put under my eyes. You won't believe it. Maybe it's because I'm turning 26 But under my eyes, I have like very very light. Oh my what's marigold? Like they, they advertise the marigold. Is that what the place is called? Oh, it marigold is. Coffee. Oh, the marigold mercantile. Fun and healthy store. That's that's me. Fun and healthy. Okay. <laughs> but I haven't found a correct. I, sorry, I like got off track to think about that, but 
I like like kind of I don't say like very light, not dark circles, but almost like a little bit of darkness under my eyes. Me not admitting anything to myself. Um, and I really wanted to get a corrector because yesterday when I was in Blue Mercury, she put in a corrector, it made a huge difference. And the one that she used has good reviews. People say that you can't, you don't get a lot of product in it. It's the Trish McCoy one, and that one like apparently that the the wand only like goes to like let's say here and the tubes that long, so like on purpose you can't get a lot of the product. And people say that it like lasts a month. But the Touche Claw, I feel like, is a classic. I feel like if you grew up on YouTube in the beauty space, like, you know the Touche Claw. And this is in the shade 1, and it's just the... I don't like the applicator. A bunch of people said this before. They, I don't, I'm don't. i so shocked that they never reinvented it in all these years. They could have literally... Like, they could... YSL um, Marketing, if you're listening to me, reinvent the Touche Claw and bring it back and do a whole campaign. I feel like Emily in Paris, you know, she's kind of with ideas. But seriously, like, if they were to bring this product back in, I don't know, a tub or something else, not as, I guess this is better than, like, that, the, the concealer one, but some other better method, it would be so... I think it'd be way better. Also, if any of you guys have tried the Rare Beauty blushes, the cream ones, tell me if you like them. So, I finally got some out. Yeah, it just is so not hygienic. I don't want to waste a lot. But it's like a very pinky color because it's a corrector, so it's like so people use it as a concealer too. So people layer under their eyes. I do it a tiny bit. Ideally, I would say I do it with a brush, but hold on. I'm about to look like I had eight hours of sleep I'm on the go with the applicator. But like, it just add that brightness under your eyes. I really like that. So that's what we picked up. Nothing crazy. Just a staple. We're ready. We're good now. We're good now. Are you ready for this jelly? Dun 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 dun.